Okay, in this video we're going to discuss some components that you typically will see in a little better golfer. We're going to discuss the releasing of 4-in-1, the turning in the golf swing, and how the right knee should function. So we're going to isolate each one of these parts to begin with, and the first part we're going to talk about is the right knee. So typically, if a golfer is tilting back, you can start to see this at the setup. So if they come to you for a lesson, their right knee and right foot are turned in. So the right foot would be perpendicular to the target line, the knee would be turned inwards too much. That's already starting to tilt the golfer back into the right at the setup, which would make the path go excessively to the right on the downswing. So as Laney swings to the top and does this incorrectly on the way down, the right knee would begin to flex, that which would tilt the axis of the shoulder turned back, which would make the path go excessively to the right. So a good drill to help a golfer stop uh, doing the right knee and flexing it too much would be to turn the right foot out excessively, have the right knee out the most, and you have them start punching balls. Just have them start punching the balls, keeping that right leg straight, not letting it flex. So by having the right foot way out, having the right knee turned out, that's going to reduce the amount that that right knee flexes on the downswing, and that's going to help keep the axis of the shoulder turn stable, so they don't swing out and thin and push any of the golf balls. Now we'll just talk about the releasing of the levers from the front view first and then from down the line second. So when Laney swings back to the top of the swing, the distance, the distance the handle is to the right shoulder, let's say it's 12 inches. And a golfer that doesn't release the fourth and first accumulator, if they just come down, this distance will keep staying 12 inches and the axis of the shoulder turn will tilt back and the shoulders will be too tilted. So if they get to the top of the swing, incorrectly again later, we said the distance is 12 inches, then as they swing down, it keeps staying, keep going 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. There's no releasing of these levers, which tilts the axis of the shoulder turn back, which will also make the path of the swing go excessively to the right. So now Laney's going to demonstrate doing it correctly from the face-on view again. So she goes to the top. We said this is 12 inches, so she would swing down, it will go 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So by the time the shaft, by the time the shaft's parallel to the ground, the distance, the shoulder to the hands, the handle would be, would be 22 inches. And those releasing a four and one keep the axis of the shoulder turn stable and makes the golfer swing straighter into the ball and it reduces the amount the ball pushes and hooks. Now if Laney turns around from down the line, right there. So if she goes to the top of her swing from down the line, how to see this is if this angle right here between the left arm and the shoulder needs to pull away incrementally. Right there, stop right there Laney. So you can see how this angle became wider as she started down. That's four and one releasing. If she did this incorrectly, go to the top of the swing. Start pulling back. You see how this angle right here has not released at all, and how the path of the swing it got excessively to the right. Okay, now we're going to go over the turning component in the golf swing and what you'll typically see in better players that don't turn in the follow through. So now Laney's going to do this correctly first, just so we have a baseline to measure off of. So when Laney's right arm is parallel to the ground, this would be the correct way to see this, that the shoulders have turned 90 degrees, the hips have turned 80, 90 degrees, the right knee has turned in 80, 90 degrees. So if Laney starts again from setup, just so we're on the same page, you can see if we're just looking at the knee and the shoulders and the hips, See how the knee right now would be like almost perpendicular to the target line? By the time that Laney would get finished, you see how now the knee is turned 80 to 90 degrees towards the target line, how the hips are 80 to 90, and how the shoulders are 90 degrees. So this would just be the baseline, what you're looking for to start measuring. Now if Laney does this incorrectly, a golfer that would be tilting back, not turning and swinging too far to the right, Ground more, right there. You can see how now the shoulders have only turned like 50, 60 degrees, as well as the hips, and the right foot's down too long, and the right knee hasn't turned. And just so we're clear, if Laney was just to stay bent over 
and just turn. If a golfer just turns while staying bent over, do it one more time. If a golfer just turns while staying bent over, the axis of the shoulder turn will move the most forward. But what you'll typically see in better players is they'll slide, they'll slide and extend too fast and that'll tilt the axis of the shoulder turn back. So the turning component has been lost. And how would you say um, how this has changed over the past couple of years with all the instruction and the instructors? Well, what's, what's typically happening is, is everybody's uh, focusing on the uh, extending sliding. and the sliding, and then they're leaving the turning part out, I think more out of fear, because most of us throughout our careers, if you're my age or a little older, a little younger, you've been turning too much now you're trying to tilt and slide and you're not turning enough. And a lot of pit players are even scared that they think by turning that they're going to cut the ball. Right. Wouldn't you say? Agreed. And you're not going to cut won't. this ball. If Laney sets up to this ball, if she has her hands or the hands are forward, the weight's forward, she already has the path already set to go outward. All she has to do is maintain this relationship by extending and turning through the ball. That'll keep the wedge stable through the ball. That'll make this shot pattern a lot tighter. We're going to discuss the turning component from down the line just so that you can see the down the line view. So when Laney does this incorrectly, and does her follow through where she does not turn she just slides and extends that throws the arms off the body so by the time that right arm would be parallel to the ground on a really extreme case the right arm would be right over top of the stance line or a little bit out to the right that's more the extreme case what we're looking for is on the follow through when the right arm's parallel to the ground in the follow through as Laney turns through the ball and extends that the right arm is inside the stance line 20 degrees. Just because on the backswing, the left arm's inside the stance line 20, on the follow through, the right arm's inside the stance 20, which makes the golfer trace a circle. So now Flaney's gonna just punch a ball out and demonstrate. Correct. Yeah, correctly. 